Hello, I'm Gib Eggie, instructor and coordinator of experiential education at the College of DuPage. In September of 2019, I led a group of students across Spain on one of the premier European hikes, the Camino de Santiago. So what is the Camino de Santiago? Also known in English as the Way of St. James, or simply the Way, the route is a historic religious pilgrimage that leads to the shrine of the Apostle St. James the Great in the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. James was described as one of the first disciples of Jesus Christ, and according to Catholic tradition, he spread Christianity throughout the Iberian Peninsula. In the year 44, he was beheaded in Jerusalem, and his remains were later transferred in a stone boat to the current location of Santiago de Compostela. Historically, one might embark on a pilgrimage as a penance for sins. Today, hikers still embark for religious reasons, but others may walk the way as a spiritual retreat, a break from society and technology, as a way to experience a new culture, or simply physical challenge. After a brief tour of Madrid, we traveled like most Europeans do by train. The overland journey across northwestern Spain would take just over six hours. Coupled with the eight-hour direct flight from Chicago, made for a lot of sitting. We would make up for all of our time sitting as soon as we arrived in Saria, the start of our Camino de Santiago hike. Why did we start in Saria and not one of the countless other destinations? There's a few reasons. First, our class trained for a five-day, 114-kilometer journey. Though aggressive, the Camino we did is something most people who have undergone the proper training can accomplish. Second, we wanted the luxury of clean clothes daily, so the majority of our luggage was transported for us each day. This is easier to coordinate on the shorter itineraries. Finally, the Camino Compostela Certificate. Pilgrims who prove they have completed at least 100 kilometers of the pilgrimage receive this certificate. We aspired for 114 kilometers. The 114 kilometers would be traveled over five days with no rest days. We would hike most of the day. Our longest day would be just over 28 kilometers or 18 miles. The shortest, 19 kilometers or about 12 miles. The first day of our hike began like other days, up before the sun, a high-calorie pilgrim breakfast, morning meeting to go over our day's itinerary, and then we hit the trail. Immediately, we were reminded of the pilgrims that came before us. This year, just under 350,000 pilgrims from all over the world would complete the trek. The Camino is really laid out to help deliver the experience the pilgrim is seeking. Towns are frequent, and it is uncommon to walk too far without seeing an albergue or hostel, allowing for spontaneity. The towns, for the most part, are small, and soon the trail will leave for open country. Though you are obviously a tourist, the experience is not touristy. You're not rushed from must-see attraction to must-see attraction. Instead, the experience plays out differently for everyone. The Camino is not much of a navigational challenge. You will regularly see people dressed like you with hiking boots and walking sticks, and you will also see trail markers that let you know you're going the right way. The scallop shell has become the symbol of the trail, but the true meaning is still up for debate. Some believe when St. James's body was brought to Spain, he was lost at sea only to wash ashore undamaged and adorned in scallop shells. During the medieval period, possessing a shell was proof of completion as these shells were abundant in the waters not too far from the cathedral in Santiago. Today, pilgrims like the one seen here get their shell early in the journey, a symbol that they are a pilgrim. This is a standard trail marker. Most don't get the attention that this one received, but this one was special. An American might see this and think 100,000 kilometers, but thankfully the comma is used just like the period in Europe. Only 100 kilometers to go, a welcome sight for those coming from France with more than 700 kilometers behind them. But for us, this was only the first day. And the first day was coming to an end. After 14 miles of hiking, we arrived in Porta Marin and the 52 steps up the ancient Roman bridge to our accommodations. The Camino is an affordable adventure. You're hiking most of the day, food was usually local fare and reasonably priced. Hard to beat a local three course meal with wine for only 10 euro. After dinner, Church services are common in the villages along the Camino. This is the Church of San Juan, 
Churches like these were built along the Camino to protect and assist pilgrims on their way to Santiago. Day two would be a slightly longer 15 miles. Shortly after leaving Puerto Marin, we arrived at the archaeological site of Castro de Castamayor, an Iron Age era fort that was abandoned around the first century. The slow pace and need for frequent rest forces the hiker to reflect on the experience. There's something very meditative about walking and having a day to complete a task at your own pace. Some hikers carry with them a symbol, a picture, or simply a stone. Leaving it behind at one of the markers along the way symbolizes the release of a personal burden. Most pilgrims travel on foot, but you will also see bicyclists and those traveling by horse, much like some pilgrims hundreds of years ago. Some also believe that the scallop shell, ridges converging at one point, represents the many roads that the pilgrims take to Santiago. Day three would be our longest day, 28 kilometers or 18 miles. As we departed, we were reminded why we chose September to do the trek. Though we did experience some rain, September is a drier month and the temperatures were perfect for long days outside. We would get indoors from time to time to get coffee, snack, or a lunch, and the frequent interactions with local people made it possible for some of us to use our Spanish. Personally, my favorite stretches of the trail were through the quiet forests of northern Spain. These sections were few. The well-ordered groves of eucalyptus trees are far more common. These trees were brought over from Australia and take about 15 years to mature. Their fast-growing nature makes them highly profitable. The entire length of our Camino would be through the autonomous community of Galicia in northwestern Spain. The language here is a mixture of Spanish and Portuguese, and it's hard to ignore the Celtic influence in this region as well. Due north of Galicia, across the Celtic Sea, is Ireland. With our long day behind us, we took a taxi into the countryside to overnight at a small family run in. Day four would be our shortest day with only 19 kilometers on the agenda and we were well into our groove. It seems, however, our happy hiker left something behind. His passport. Thankfully, this was just a joke. Which brings me to the pilgrim's passport or credential. This is the document used to verify your pilgrimage to the pilgrim's office in Santiago de Compostela. Along the way, we get dated stamps of the locations we visited, encouraging us to interact with the shopkeepers and other local establishments. It also serves as the perfect one-of-a-kind souvenir of our accomplishment. It was obvious today that we were getting closer to the urban area of Santiago de Compostela. But there were still small, idyllic towns we passed through, about a dozen small villages a day. Achy feet were the main complaint from our hikers, and blister management was the primary first aid event. The last day, day five, was 13 miles of hiking in the rain. I love rainy days because they force you to use your gear. Why did I bring my raincoat or pack cover? Ah, that's why. Nearing Santiago, the trail gave way to the back roads of the suburbs, and street art was more prevalent. Buon Camino is a greeting you give to other pilgrims. I would often try to detect the accent of the people who would give me the greeting. Just about to the cathedral now. The old town of Santiago de Compostela is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and the maze of narrow roads and alleys are all paved in stone. As we arrived at the cathedral, the weather cleared and we celebrated with other pilgrims. The cathedral was completed in 1211 and is only one of three remaining cathedrals that were built over a tomb of an apostle of Jesus. Some of us took the celebratory group picture. Next, we walked to the adjacent pilgrim's office to show our passport proving that we walked at least 100 kilometers and pick up our well-deserved Compostela. Too late for some of us, we would have to return in the morning. So we celebrated instead. And how does one celebrate an incredible accomplishment? with octopus, of course. Being too late to pick up our Compostela forced us to wake up early and walk to the pilgrim's office. The square in front of the cathedral was empty. We had an afternoon flight to Barcelona today, so being one of the first in line was vital. Soon, the line stretched toward the cathedral, but our perseverance paid off.